Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to today's coffee break. Remember, every Monday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we're meeting here live on Facebook and also Zoom to chat about some of the uh, homeschool topics that you have requested. So during this time, please do interact. If you are on Facebook, please type in any comments or questions and we will follow up with you. Also, if you're in Zoom, please do use the chat box because I can see your questions here, your comments here, and uh, I can share them or respond to those questions and comments. Now, today we're going to be talking about developing a growth mindset to help deal with transitions and changes. We all know that over the last few months, there have been a lot of transitions and changes in our lives. And in this upcoming school year, I know that we are all getting prepared because things are gonna change. There are gonna be lots of transitions. We think we have a plan one day and then that plan seems to change the next day. And this is very difficult for a lot of our children with attention difficulties or ADHD. If we think about uh, areas of executive function, you know that some of those areas are uh, tr uh, mental flexibility, which is the ability to transition freely also emotional control. So when we have difficulty with mental flexibility, that means changes and transitions can oftentimes be hard and that can lead to those emotional breakdowns or meltdowns that you're seeing. So it's really important that we help develop some skills so that your child or your students can really deal with some of those upcoming transitions and changes that are inevitable, right? Change is going to happen. Change is inevitable. Our mindset is something that we can control and that we can really use to help ourselves move freely through these transitions. So today we're not going to be talking about a quick tip or something that you can just do as a quick fix. This is actually a process how to develop a growth mindset. And it is a process. And it's a process that all of us can benefit from, children and adults. So when we talk about a growth mindset, it is the belief that our skills and abilities can grow as opposed to being fixed. And this is a really important mindset to have because if you look at the differences between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, you'll notice some significant changes here. If you think that you have a uh, fixed mindset, you think, I, I just give up. It's too hard, I give up. If you have a growth mindset, you'll think, this is difficult, but I'll use some of the strategies that we've learned in order to get through this, right? Instead of just thinking, I'm not good at this, think, what am I missing, right? You're giving yourself some strategies. And I know that many of you as parents out there have been dealing with this. When something gets too difficult or it's just perceived as being too difficult, your child may shut down, walk away from the work, doesn't even want to attempt doing that math assignment or that reading assignment because they shut down. They think that they just cannot do that. So we need to start developing this growth mindset. And I really like the uh, very last one on this page that says plan A didn't work. That's the fixed mindset, right? We end there, plan A didn't work. But the growth mindset thinks, good thing the alphabet has 25 more letters. So let's start that road to developing a growth mindset. So when we think about a growth mindset, you know, a lot of times we're thinking about skills, but how can this be applied and how can the growth mindset actually help with transitioning or starting something new? Well, it helps students focus on what is actually within their control because I know many of you have dealt with your child and they feel like everything is outside of their control. So now we need to put the focus on them and show them what is within their control. And you know, this is something that we do within our play attention program. 
you know that we have that body wave armband that actually monitors their brain activity that tells us how attentive they are. And then that information is given over to the computer where they're allowed to control cognitive exercises just with their mind or more specifically, their attentive state alone. And they receive constant immediate feedback as to whether or not they really are focused and paying attention. And that's really important. It's, it's what we're talking about here. Because a lot of times they think, you know, maybe you have a 12 year old and at this point they've heard so many times, you can't pay attention, you never pay attention. And so they really think that attention is outside of their control. But within the first couple of minutes of using play attention, they're actually rewarded for paying attention. So we shift that perspective, right? We're showing them that this is something that is within their control. And that's what we're doing with the growth mindset, that we're helping them focus on what is actually in their control. And it also helps them be proactive instead of reactive or disengaged, right? Instead of having that emotional meltdown or just walking away and giving up, we want them to be proactive. So the very first step to this is to talk about neuroplasticity with your child or your student. Now, I know that this can be a complex um, concept, However, you can break it down very simply. And I like to use the example of a field. If you came across this field and you absolutely had to move through this field, how are you going to do it? Right now, it looks really difficult, doesn't it? Because there's all this, um, I don't know if that's goldenrod or some type of flower that is in your way. And how are you going to actually make your way through this? Well, the way to make your way through it is to create a new pathway, right? So you just start walking. And the more you walk that same pathway, you repeat it over and over and over again, it gets easier. It gets a lot easier to move through that field because you keep repeating it over and over and you create that new pathway to help you move through that field. It's the same with creating new pathways in your brain. That is within your control. So this is how neuroplasticity or creating new pathways, which is what you're doing, um, actually occurs. So use something, use an example from your child's life. Maybe your son has been practicing a free throw, right? And in the beginning, he started practicing the free throw, right? And when he did that, he was actually causing these uh, uh, neurons to actually talk to one another, right? He's sparking that new pathway. Those neurons start talking to each other. And the more he does it, he repeats it, he practices it. He's laying that new pathway. The more you practice, the more it becomes easier and easier to go through that. So the more practice he did, the easier that free throw be became. And that's neuroplasticity. He's actually creating new pathways in the brain. The same is true for a thought, right? A thought can spark a new pathway in your brain. So instead of thinking math is hard, I can't do it, start thinking math is difficult, but what strategies can I use in order to get better? That's the thought you start having over and over and over. Instead of having that thought, math is difficult, I'm not trying. Math is difficult, but I'm going to start incorporating these strategies to help me learn. And you start thinking that over and over and over again, and you're causing a new pathway to become formed in your mind. So just as it became a little bit easier to get through that field, it's going to get easier to move through that math assignment. The same is true for transitions and changes. So what you can do with your child is actually start talking about the changes and transitions that are upcoming and take steps to help your child develop that growth mindset. 
And it's a great time for you to actually model this in your own life. So instead of I can't improve, you're going to develop that mindset that I can improve with the right strategies. That's our new growth mindset. So this is an activity that I actually did with one of my students. And we were talking about the upcoming school year and uh, what transitions and changes were going to occur that he was nervous about. So that was the very first question. What do you think is going to happen at school that you can't deal with? right? Because your child may have a lot of anxieties right now, a lot of worries. They've heard things from friends. They've heard you talking to other parents about some things. They've heard it on the news. They've seen it on the internet. So they might have some concerns about this upcoming school year. So take the time to actually have them express exactly what they're concerned about in the upcoming school year. When I talked to my student, my student said, he was worried that his teacher was going to leave mid-year, okay? That was the transition or that was the change he was worried about. So I said, well, why do you think that that's going to occur? And he said that that's something he heard. He heard um, his mom talking with another mom that some teachers aren't going to stay for the full year. So that was something that he became very fixated on and he was worried that right now, he knows who his teacher is. He's actually met her before in the previous school year. So that's what he's prepared for. But he's not prepared for the unknown, which is what if a new teacher comes in? So I said, well, why does that make you scared? What makes you nervous about that? And he said, well, what if my new teacher is really strict? You know, I know that this teacher I'm going to have now is really nice, I know that I can talk to her, but what if my new teacher is really strict? And he's very nervous about that. And so I said, okay, so we don't know. We don't know who your new teacher is going to be. It might be a male, it might be a female, it might be strict, it might be very nice and nurturing. So what should you try regardless? If you get a new teacher in, what should you try? Now, this took a while for him to work through, but he came up with, I should get to know my new teacher and continue to do my best work and ask questions or talk to someone if I get nervous. So I thought that was really good. You know, part of this growth mindset is knowing when to reach out for help, right? Knowing who you can talk to. So that's another important part of this development of the growth mindset is to make certain that your child or your students are aware of that social network. If things get difficult and you feel like you might um, shut down, who can you talk to? So make certain that that's part of this process. So he decided that instead of, you know, when, if, if, not when, but if this new teacher comes into the um, equation, that instead of just shutting down, which is something he would have typically done, right? A new teacher comes immediately with that fixed mindset. He thinks, I can't deal with this. It's not, it, this isn't going to be good. But with a growth mindset, he's going to actually take the time to get to know that teacher before making a judgment. And regardless, he's going to continue to do his best work and if things start to get difficult for him, he's going to reach out to others for support. How can I keep these challenges from standing in my way? And he kind of repeated what he said in the previous one. I need to simply continue doing my best work and focus on what I can do, which I thought was really important because remember, we're talking about controlling what is within their power, right? What can they control? We want them to focus on that. So keep doing your best work and then talk to someone if you get worried or nervous or anxious, then you reach out to someone and we'll come up with some strategies together. So these are some good prompting questions that you can start using to really work through some of the upcoming changes. And it will be a really good opener for you 
to find out because maybe you don't even know some of the things your child's thinking about right now. And some of them may be irrational, right? They may be irrational to us, but very realistic to your child. So make certain you take some time to talk about these different areas and start developing that growth mindset. So I have a list of questions and I actually found these questions on understood.com. Um, and if you'd like, we can post the link to this so that you can use some of these growth model questions, um, these growth mindset uh, questions that will really help you elicit that growth mindset. So if you um, chat with your child, there are some really good questions that you can start incorporating. What made you think hard today? How will you challenge yourself today? What can you learn from this experience or this mistake? So lots of good questions here. And as I said, if you'd like, we can go ahead and post uh, this link to understood.com so you can start incorporating some of these uh, questions when you're developing that growth mindset. So remember, this is a process. Today wasn't about a quick fix. It wasn't a tip that you can incorporate right away, but you can start laying the foundation. This is a process. And really, it's a process that we should all be going through because even as adults, a growth mindset will help us personally and professionally. So it's something that we should all start using. And a growth mindset will help your student focus on what is within their control and it will help them be proactive instead of reactive or disengaged. So important for your child, important for your students, but also for you personally, um, for your personal life and your professional life. So I hope that gives you an idea of how you can help really navigate these upcoming transitions and changes. They're inevitable, they are going to happen. And they're always going to happen, no matter what the year, no matter what the circumstances, change is going to happen. And with weak executive function, remember mental flexibility is just simply an area that sometimes is difficult. So make certain you're laying that foundation for some strong executive function skills to help them develop that growth mindset. The, your uh, actual assignment is now to ask your child what potential or known changes makes them nervous about the new school year and start growth on the mindset model, uh, start the growth mindset model. Now we do have some upcoming events that I wanted to mention today. On Thursday, we have a special webinar called Self-Care is Not Selfish. So if you would like to attend that event or at or if you can't attend live, it's at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Remember when you register, you'll receive the replay recording. Um, so that is on our website at playattention.com and then go to special webinars so you can register for that. And as always, we have our Play Attention customized program. So if you are focusing this year on helping your child or yourself develop the core cognitive skills that are necessary for strong executive function, make certain you reach out to us. Uh, we can do a one-on-one -on -one consultation to talk about your different strengths and weaknesses and customize a plan that's right for you. Uh, we have the upcoming Executive Function 101 course. Again, that is outlined on our website. So if you go to playattention.com and then to resources, you'll see our Executive Function 101 course. That does start in September. And what we're going to do there is we're going to have some supplemental activities available to you. Now, each of these activities are going to be broken down into areas of executive function. So there will be categories such as time management, organization, mental flexibility, emotional control, impulse control. And we are going to have different activities with, uh, within each of those categories every week. So these can be uh, modified for a five-year-old or an adult. And uh, if you want to register, you just simply go to our website and register. 
if you're a current Play Attention client, these activities will simply enhance the work you're doing with Play Attention because these are activities you'll start using in order to apply all of the skills that you're learning within Play Attention. But you can enroll in our course whether you're a current Play Attention client or a non-current Play Attention client. And we will continue for the next few weeks to have our Coffee Break Mondays. So next week, I believe we will be discussing emotional control. So I do hope that you will join us. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to us on Facebook or on our playattention.com page, or give us a call at our 800 number. Thanks so much, everyone. And I hope you have a fantastic week. Take care.